Hey, this is Zach with PRP Seats, here today to show you how to install RC covers onto a Toyota 4Runner. RC covers bring a whole new look and feel to your interior. With front seat, rear bench, and center console covers available in several pre-designed colors. Or you can make it yours and customize your seat with over 60 different colors and materials to choose from. PRP has several different seat cover models depending on the model and generation of your 4Runner. But for installation, all the steps are mostly the same. So let's get started. The first step is going to be to take your covers out of the box and lay them out. If those covers have been sitting in the box for a while, they may have some wrinkles or kind of creases when they are bent around to get them in there. So you want to lay them out put them in the sun, let them get warm and let that material warm up and it's gonna help get a lot of those creases out of there. And when you're putting them on the seat, if that material is warm, it's gonna be more flexible and easier to install. Now we're gonna start on the front seat covers. We actually recommend leaving the seat in while you install it in the vehicle. You can pull it out and today I'm actually gonna pull it out just so you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing but it's honestly more work to unbolt the seat and undo all the wiring harnesses underneath to get that seat out than it is just leaving it in and putting the cover on while it's still in the vehicle. On the rear bench, you absolutely want to keep it in there because it is a pain in the butt to take out. First step is to remove the headrest. Just push on that button, pull it up. If it's inside the vehicle, you just need to recline the seat to be able to get the headrest off without it hitting the roof. Next, go to the back of the seat and you're gonna have this carpet skirt that kind of folds underneath that is held on with this elastic band underneath. Usually it's just kind of wrapped around these springs. Just pop that up so you're able to get through the middle of the seat right here. Next up, we're gonna start with the top cover. You wanna make sure that you have the correct side. There's a driver and a passenger side for both covers. How you're gonna know this is there's this big airbag slot it's supposed to go right here on the outside next to the door. Next, open up the bottom of that cover and we're just gonna slide it over the top of the seat. You're gonna wanna take this flap in the front and push it through the center of the seat to the back. Next, we have these little cut holes in our cover that go where these headrest slots are. You're just gonna push it down on one side to the cover kinda goes underneath the plastic and then work it around all three and then four corners so it sits flush with the plastic piece on top. Next up, just go around and kind of tuck your fingers around the sides right here. Make sure the cover is kind of being nice and flush with the plastic and it's not getting bunched up on the side right here. Next, go to the back side of the seat and flip this carpeted skirt up. Then you're gonna take the stock skirt, you're going to flip it up and tuck it underneath the back of our cover so it gets out of the way. As you can see, the flap that we push through on the front is here in the back. You're going to pull these through all the way so you can see them. And as you can see, we have a cutout on each side so you can run these wires through here without them getting caught up. Next step is you're gonna to wanna to pull really tight on both of these sides to get them to come together. The tighter you can get all of these, the tighter your coverage is gonna look on the front of your seat and you're not gonna have as many wrinkles or as much movement as you sit in it time and time again. The easiest way to really get these tight is to use wide nose pliers. Instead of just ruining your fingers trying to pull these the entire time, use those pliers and you'll be able to get a really good grip and get these really tight. Then connect the hook and loop strips together. Once they're connected in the back, go back on the front. Just make sure everything's looking nice, everything's lined up nice. There's not a ton of movement in the cover. If you need to, you can go back and readjust and retighten the back. Then the final step on this is we have this airbag pocket so the airbag can come out in the event of a side impact. So there's just this little kind of mesh strip on here with the two kind of pockets or sides. You're gonna take your fingers and push 
that mesh over kind of on the other, around the corner on the side of the seat. So it kind of stays in place right there with the top flap going over it. It's usually easiest to start at the top and then work your way down. Now we're gonna start on the bottom cover. Just like the top, there is a driver and passenger specific side. So as, as you can see, there's these two sides right here that you wanna be next to the center console and on the front side of the seat. This open side right here is gonna be on the outside where your buttons are. As you can see in a minute, we're gonna run this string down underneath the buttons into the back. Put the cover on, kind of work it around the seat belt and around the sides, try to get it in place as best you can, and push this flap through the back of the seat. Next up, on the front of our cover, we're gonna take this edge and just push it underneath the plastic skirt. Try to get that around all the sides you can. Push it down as deep as you can. You can do this with your fingers, or alternatively, if you have a tucking tool or really just flat metal or plastic object where you can tuck it down in there without hurting the cover, that makes it easy as well. On this front corner right here, you're gonna take this string end and push it down till it pops down to the front corner down here, and then grab it from the bottom. Once you have that done, continue tucking this outside and get it flush and underneath the plastic. Next, take that string in the front corner, run it just underneath and kind of tuck it behind the plastic all the way to the back. On the inside, next to the center console, you're just gonna have to kind of reach your hand back here and find this other string and pull that one to the back as well. Then find that flap that came through the center of the seat and pull it tight all the way through. Then you're gonna take both these strings and run them through these little ribbon loops that are on the back of this flap. You wanna make sure that these strings both start or come into the back of the seat right underneath the slider right here. Then at this point, I usually like to go back to the front, make sure the seat cover is sitting nicely. As you can see, I still have a couple little wrinkles over on this side. So go around, kind of tuck and move the cover around as you need. Make sure it's getting all the way down here in the front and the sides and everything's pulling nice. And then we're gonna go to the back and tie off that string. Then, just like I said before, you wanna get this cover real tight and pull it real tight through this flap. The tighter you get this and the tighter you get this drawstring, the less movement and wrinkles you're gonna have on the cover as you're sitting on it. On these, you can also use these pliers to hold that string and be able to get it really, really tight like you wouldn't be able to with just your fingers. Once it's tight, use that pliers to lock or hold that loop in place while you tie it off. Then when you're done and you have this excess string, you can either tie it off on the side or if you're pretty sure you're never gonna take the covers off again, you can cut the excess. Once that's all tied off, go back to the front, make sure everything looks good, everything's real tight, there's not a lot of movement or kind of waviness in the seat cover. And once all that's done, you're gonna to go to the back, take that elastic band that's on this carpet piece back here and tie it off on the springs underneath the seat. And then last step is to put on the headrest cover. PRP logo always goes in the front and this rubber patch always goes in the back. You're gonna take it, easiest way is on these, a lot of times put it on the ground with the spikes going down to the ground and just pull the cover over the top of it. If it's real tight, you can kind of push the foam down, pull the cover over, push the foam down, pull the cover over like that as well. Make sure all four corners get around. As you can see on this one, I kind of pulled it too far to one side and not the other. So I just kind of have to readjust it 
and pull that side over to get it even. You can also move the material, kind of like this. Just go halfway up and kind of move it over into the space you need. Once it's on there pretty good, you're gonna go to the bottom and connect these two loop and hook strips. Get it nice and tight, and then do the two ones on the outside corners. Final check is just to go look at your headrest, make sure the logo is centered, nice, it's not uneven or wonky. And if you need to, just readjust and move the cover around as needed to get it to sit right. After that, you're just gonna place it back into the seat. Now we're gonna start on the rear bench. The rear bench in all the Forerunners is split between a 60 side that has the center console in it and the 40 side. So lay out all your covers, make sure you have everything. Look at all the pieces, make sure you're lining up with each one that you need. And then the bottom pieces are gonna be their own 60 and 40 section as well. First step is gonna to be to take off all three headrests. So it makes it easier if you just kind of put the seat kind of halfway forward and then pop these up and off. Next up, you're gonna pull this bottom seat forward. Just use that little release pull and then put this seat forward so it lays down flat. As you're gonna see in a bit, we're gonna be taking this cover, putting it over the top of the seat, and then meeting those two ends at the bottom down here. As you can tell with this foreigner that has this storage compartment right here, it's gonna be kinda hard to get your fingers through and access that. So I recommend actually unbolting this and taking it out while we're doing the install, and then once you're done, putting it back on. So to take that off, you're just gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Just pop up this little plastic piece right behind the anchor. Then use a 10 millimeter socket to take out the bolts on either side. Next step is we're gonna remove this little plastic piece up here where the seat belt is, kind of get it loose on the seat belt. We're gonna put the cover on and then reinstall it on top of the cover. So there's just a small little Phillips head screw right here that you can just use your screwdriver to loosen and take off. Next up, take your cover for this 60 section side right here, open it all the way up. Then you're gonna pop this center armrest section forward and get it out of the way. Then kind of release the seat and have it kind of like a 45 degree angle. You're gonna take this cover and slide it over the side and top, kind of like this. Take this end of the cover and put it underneath the seat belt right here. So move it around, try to get everything into place as you can. As you can see right here, on this arm, there's this bolt that pulls, that sticks out from the seat that connects to that centerpiece. We have a little hole cut out there. Make sure that bolt goes through that hole. On the back here, we have a square cutout for the car seat anchor on there. Try to get this as close as you can. It's hard sometimes with each cover being a little bit different and each vehicle being a little bit different that they're not always gonna perfectly line up, but you can move that cover around as best you need to make it work. On the front, you're gonna take that flap and push it underneath, kind of through the center of the seat down here. You're also gonna have two slots down here for the car seat anchors. Make sure that, it, that they line up well with where the car seat anchors are on the seat. Take this cover and push it around that corner. You can pop this center piece down if you need to to make that a little bit easier. As you can see down here in the corner, this seat belt is attached to the stock seat with this little elastic band. We provided a cut hole in our cover. So 
So you have this big flap on this side right here next to the center console. Make sure this goes back and tucks around this kind of pivot point for the center console right there. And just kind of move the cover around, get it tight, get it nicely in place where it needs to be. Just like on your front seats, on the top, you're gonna to take this cover and push it around one corner of this headrest piece, and then go around all four sides so that plastic sits flush over the top of the cover. You're also gonna do this with this release button here on the corner. Once you've gone around and got the cover pretty set, you've pulled everything around, made sure it got around the corners and it looks like it's sitting where it needs to on the seat, you're gonna go on the back and connect this zipper at the top. Then run it all the way down the bottom of the seat, take that little excess flap and you're gonna tuck it back underneath the cover. Next up, you're gonna go to the bottom of the seat and pull that flap up from the bottom and the flap on the top and then connect them together. Like I said before, you wanna get these really tight. The tighter you get them, the less movement, the overall better look you're gonna have on your seat covers. So you can use flat nose pliers to get a really good grip and pull these really tight as you go. Then just connect the hook and loop strips together. Then take that plastic piece, put it back up into place on top of the cover. Then just reinstall that screw with a Phillips screwdriver. Next up, we're gonna install the center console cover. So for this, you're gonna start by taking out these two little rubberized inserts that go on there. And then we're gonna take off this plastic cover with the cup holders. There are two screws in here that hold that plastic piece on. So just use a Phillips screwdriver and remove both those screws. Once those two screws are out, you can pop this plastic piece up and kind of pull it back on there. Next, take our PRP cover and open it up all the way. You're gonna start by putting it underneath and putting that back flap underneath the, the center console and up to the top. You may get kind of caught on the plastic pieces down here underneath, so you just need to move it around and finagle it to get it in the right spot. Once you've done that, you want to connect these pieces here on the bottom and make sure that they line up nicely together. Then once you've got that bottom section connected, you're gonna pull the front of the cover over the console. Up here in front, we have this little slot that you're gonna feed that ribbon pull piece through. And then as you can see on this cover, we have three holes in front that match up with those three bracket holes where that plastic piece goes on. So just make sure that those all line up nicely over the top. Then you're gonna finish connecting the hook and loop strips on here and just work around, make sure everything looks nice and tight and readjust the cover as needed. Once it's all good to go, you're gonna take that plastic cup holder piece and put it back on. Make sure those clips go through our cover and through the stock cover and then go down into place. Then reinstall those two screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. And put those rubber inserts back in. On the back side of the armrest section, we have two 
carpet pieces that you are going to lay onto the back side back here to match the exact carpet of your PRPCs. There's two pieces, real quick and easy. Just go right onto the carpet right here. If you need to access the child anchor in the center for any reason, you can just pull off this carpet piece and use it whenever you need. The one on top is gonna have the more square cutout, and the one that goes on bottom is gonna have the longer rectangle cutout. Next up, we're gonna do the bottom section of the 60 side. So take your cover, lay it out over and on top of the seat. You're gonna pull this release handle and kind of have the seat halfway up. Continue moving the cover and sliding it around, getting it on round all four corners. Kind of like the front seat covers, this one just uses a drawstring on here, but we also want to make sure we get this cover really tight. So if you want to go around as you have the seat popped up, just pull on all the sides, make sure everything's sitting nice and tight and as it should on top. Then you're gonna take this little pull tab and we have a pocket up here in front, a little gap in our cover that you're gonna pull that through so you can still access it. Then a little bit different setup with this pull string. We have a few different loops that you're gonna run this string back and forth on. One up here in between the seat in this gap that's gonna pull the center of the cover down and another one down here at the bottom is gonna pull this cover up. So take that string, run it down to the bottom and put it through that loop in the seat cover on the bottom. Get it nice and tight. Then you're gonna run it up to this top loop that goes in between this gap in the seat. Run it down there, get it nice and tight. Then run it down again through that same loop in the bottom. Then you're gonna take the end of that string and run it through that final loop and tie it off. Like I said before, it makes it really easy to use pliers. Just hold that string and pull it really tight that way. Then Pop the seat down, check it out, make sure everything's nice and tight. There's a couple of areas over here that I need to pull over a little bit that way. So readjust as needed, and if you need to go back and retighten that drawstring, you can do that. Now we're gonna start on the 40 side of the bench. Starting with the top cover, just gonna pop it down about halfway, and then just like before, open this up all the way slide the cover over to the side and on top of the seat. Pull it down around all the sides and then on top you're gonna pop these little plastic pieces underneath the holes and the same with this release lever over here. I'm gonna pull that cover all the way on the back Get all these pieces around the corner and push that flap on the bottom underneath the seat. Make sure that these child anchor slots right here line up with where the child anchors are on the seat. On the back side in this corner up against the plastic, you're gonna see one end of the zipper and you need to find the other end of the zipper down here in the corner. You need to pull that through and up on this side. Because basically that corner of the cover, it just kind of kind of wrap around where this pivot point is for the seat. Once everything is mostly set, you can connect the zipper together and zip up this back piece. Then just take this little excess flap and tuck it underneath the cover so it's out of the way. Do the same for this little excess zipper piece up here. Once everything is pretty set, you're gonna pull hard on this back flap, 
pull hard on this top flap and connect them together. Then pop the seat up, do a little final check, readjust everything. If you have a little bit too much movement in here, you can go back and readjust and retighten those two flaps in the back. And next up is the bottom section of the 40 side of the bench. Same thing, take your cover, lay it over the top. It's usually easiest to start in the front and then go to the back. Just like on the other side, there's a little cut section right here that you can pull that release lever or that release strap through. Then go on the back side, you're gonna have that drawstring and one little loop down here in the bottom. So take that drawstring, run it down to the bottom of this loop, get it nice and tight, and then you're gonna run it back up and feed it through this loop end. That way, it's not gonna pull on one side of the cover, it's gonna pull the cover together and get it nice and tight. Then, use your pliers to hold that knot in place and tie off that drawstring. Then, once again, go on the front, check everything, make sure everything's sitting how it should. If you're having too much movement or wiggle in the cover like this, you can go back on the back again, undo that knot, and re-tighten it to get it nice and tight. And then the last step is to install the headrest covers. The headrests are side specific, so each one has this little lever on the side. So just make sure you grab the cover with the corresponding cutout hole there that lines up with that lever. Just like before, you're gonna take these and wrap it over the top and kind of pull it down. Once you get to that lever, you're gonna to wanna to tuck the cover underneath that little lever handle and then pull it down and push these little side pieces in so that lever sits flush on top of the material. Once you got the cover mostly on, go around, look at it. As you can see, this one's kind of crooked and I can tell because I have a little bit of gap down here. So I pulled this side too far down. So go around, readjust the cover as you need to get it to sit center, get it sit right and make sure that logo is even and not all crooked. Once you have it sitting nice, go on the bottom and you're gonna attach all these hook and loop strips. One big one in the center, and then two on either side. So once it's all done, you're just gonna pop this seat down about halfway and reinstall that headrest. Make sure that the handle is always going to the outside to the door so you can access it if you're trying to fold down your seats. They're great because you can match the exact colors and materials of your customers. So, start by You're going to open it up. Right there. Then, go on the bottom and get both of these bottom corners wrapped around either corner of the console. You can pull on it on either side to get it to kind of clear that corner. And then just look at it, move it around so it looks even, it looks nicely and where it needs to be. Then take that hook and loop strip, get it tight and connect it together. Once it's all set, you're good to go.
And that's it. If you have any questions or issues that pop up during your installation, feel free to contact your local authorized dealer, or you can find us at prpseats.com.